In this video, I'm talking about hearing aid insurance fraud and what you can do to prevent it. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, consider hitting the subscribe button. As long as there has been insurance, there has been insurance fraud. And this happens in any industry, including hearing health care. And if you're not careful, this fraud can happen right under your nose and not even know it. That's why I'm going to share stories of actual patients of mine who almost got scammed by hearing aid dealers who weren't following the rules. A few months back, I had two new patients come into my clinic for a second opinion about their hearing loss and their treatment options. One of them came from a prominent ear, nose, and throat clinic, and the other one came from a large retail chain. Their stories were really similar. Neither one of them were really comfortable with the rushed process from diagnosis to treatment recommendation. In fact, neither one of them understood their hearing loss, their hearing aid options, or the treatment process after they actually received their hearing aids. Fortunately, both of these individuals were smart, and instead of deciding to pursue treatment right on the spot, they went home and they started doing some research where they found some of my videos. After becoming more informed, both of these patients ended up scheduling appointments at my clinic for a second opinion, and upon scheduling, they gave their insurance information to my team so they could do an insurance investigation before their appointment. This is where things started to get interesting. In both cases, the investigation identified that both patients had already received hearing aids because the insurance company had already been billed for those hearing aids. So my initial reaction was, well, there must be some sort of mistake or these patients actually got hearing aids and they're coming back into my clinic to get a second opinion about those hearing aids. You see, the problem is, is that clinics are not allowed to bill for procedures or for medical equipment that they haven't actually rendered or delivered to a patient. This this is technically insurance fraud. The good news is both of these patients were able to open disputes with their insurance company in order to get that insurance benefit reinstated. The bad news is, is that they had to go months without hearing treatment because of the lengthy dispute process. The scary thing is if they wouldn't have come into my clinic for a second opinion, they would have never known that their insurance company was billed for treatment that they never received. Now this may not seem like a big deal on the surface, but insurance fraud like this on large scale will actually end up increasing the premiums, so the consumer loses in the end either way. Once these individuals got their insurance benefits reinstated, both of them decided to pursue treatment at my clinic. And this is where things got really interesting. One of these patients who ended up going to the large retail chain almost ended up spending an additional $4,000 with that chain on top of what his in-network benefits were. Now this is a situation called balanced billing. Balanced billing is allowed on some insurance plans, but a lot of in-network benefit plans, they do not allow balanced billing. This patient was told that treatment was gonna cost $8,000 and that his insurance was only gonna cover $4,000 of it, basically leaving him on the hook for the other $4,000. Now, this is okay if that clinic's contract is actually set up to be able to balance bill the patient, but if the clinic wasn't set up to balance bill the patient, then they are essentially also performing fraud, which is they are doing balance billing to the patient when they are not allowed to. Now, some of this is speculation because I don't know exactly what that retail location's insurance contract says, but all I know is that for the same exact treatment that he was going to get from me from a technology standpoint, it was going to cost him only $600 out of pocket instead of $4,000 out of pocket. The moral of the story is, is that you need to take ownership of your insurance benefits. If you end up going to a clinic and you do not pursue treatment, you need to call your insurance company a few weeks later and make sure that they weren't billed as if you had received treatment. On the other hand, if you go to a clinic and you do pursue treatment, but they actually balance bill you, so you have a large out-of-pocket expense, you need to call your insurance company and verify that they were actually allowed to do balance billing. Otherwise, it might not just be your insurance company who falls victim to fraud, it might also be you. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you wanna see other videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.